Hi everybody, I'm Patrick. I'm Cindy. And today we are going to learn about tensor T. So what's tensor T? I think it'll be easier if I show you. I've got two identical pieces of aluminum foil. With the first one, I'm going to carefully try to make a box. There we go. With the other one, I am just going to crush it and make it as compact as possible. Now I've got a little box and I have a small cube of aluminum. Now all we need is some water. Now if I drop the box into the jar, it will float. Right. If I drop the cube into the jar, it will sink. Right, but why? So is it because the cube is heavier? No, they were the same. That's right. The weight didn't change. The density did. You calculate density by dividing an object's mass by its volume. You can think of the mass as the weight of the object and the volume as the space the object takes up. Imagine this was a block of wood. If it measured 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters, and it weighed 200 grams, its density would be 0.2 grams per centimeter cube. If we had another block of wood that also weighed 200 grams, but this time measures 20 centimeters by 20 centimeters by 20 centimeters, then the density of that block would be much lower. They both weigh the same, but the second one would float more easily on water. So if we calculated the densities of our box and tube, we get this. The object with the lower density floats, and the one with the higher density sinks. This is why even heavy objects like cargo ships float. So here comes the fun part. We're gonna make something that takes advantage of density. First, you'll need a clean, empty bottle. Next, you will have to add a little bit of vinegar. A little goes a long way. You shouldn't need to fill it higher than 10%. After that, you will slowly add cooking oil. The slower you pour the oil, the better. If you pour too fast, you will create bubbles which will affect your end results. Keep adding oil until you reach about 80% of the way. Make sure you leave some space at the top. Never fill all the way up. Add about a quarter teaspoon of baking soda to a small cup. Add just enough water to dissolve the baking soda. Stir thoroughly. Now, add a few drops of food coloring. You can choose any color you want, but today I'm going to use red to make it look more like lava. Notice what happens to the drops of coloring. Why do you think this is happening? The food coloring is denser than the oil and sinks to the bottom. But 
is less dense than vinegar. So now it's trapped in the middle. But after a while, it slowly starts to mix with the vinegar. Now, let's add some baking soda. But not all at once. Use a dropper and slowly add the baking soda mixture to get the results you want. Here it goes! What's happening here? The baking soda mixture is denser than the oil and sinks to the bottom. When it mixes with the vinegar, a chemical reaction occurs that releases carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is a gas and is less dense than the oil. So, it floats to the top and grabs onto some of the coloring on its way up. That wasn't quite enough, so let's add some more. It looks kind of cool already, but if you have a small light source, you can put it under the bottle to make it even cooler. Much better. So what's happening? Once the bubble reaches the surface, the carbon dioxide escapes into the air and the food coloring, which is left behind, becomes denser than the oil again and sinks to the bottom. This continues to happen until all the baking soda is used up. Let's add a lot more baking soda to see what happens. Okay, let's see for today's lesson. We hope you've learned something new. Now, it's your turn to go and try to make your own lava lamp. If you like this video, please remember to like, subscribe, and share. Until next time, goodbye! goodbye.